Okay, so this is a bit different from my normal content, and trust me, YouTube Iceberg Tier 3 is on its way sooner or later, but I just needed to make a video about this pressing issue that's been invading my mind. So recently, as you may know, Multiverses came out of its closed beta. If you somehow clicked on this video and haven't heard of it, it's basically Warner Bros. answer to Super Smash Bros. It features famous IPs like Looney Tunes, DC, Scooby-Doo, Game of Thrones, etc, etc. But it's so weird. Because of the characters that are in the roster, pretty much all of them are, like, famous, you know? With the maybe possible exception given to the Steven Universe characters, I feel like if you showed basically any of these characters to the average Joe on the street, they'd recognize them. Like, everyone knows Bugs Bunny, everyone knows Superman. However, one roster addition might stick out like a sore thumb. I'm, of course, talking about this fucking dog right here. Before this game even got announced, there was this image right here that got leaked to probably 4chan of a beta roster. And this stupid dog confused the hell out of me. What is that? Why is he here? Is this like some obscure Hanna-Barbera or Cart Number character I don't recognize? No. No, it's not. This, my friends, is Rain Dog. Rain Dog, as you may have guessed from his name and appearance, is a hybrid of a reindeer and a dog. According to the official Multiverses website, Raindog is the fluffy guardian of Xanafir's royal family and the sixth wearer of the Gem of Power. Wh whatever the fuck that means. But l let's read more into his bio, maybe that'll make more sense. The world of Xanafir was one of the first to fall victim to the Nothing during the Great Dimensional Cataclysm. As far as most people knew, there were no survivors. Except one. Raindog is a royal guardian, a long-lived protector of the Xanafir royal family, assigned to keep them safe. Although he looks fluffy and sweet, the heart of a warrior beats in his chest, and he will do whatever it takes to protect those he loves. With the amazing powers from his gem, he hopes he can even find a way to bring back his beloved family. Okay, so, like, this has got to be from some story he's from, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, he's from Multiverses, man. That's his first appearance, is Multiverses. He's an original character, he's the only original character on the roster, in a game with Batman, Tom and Jerry, and fucking LeBron James. They just put this dog who isn't from anything, and then had the audacity to say he's a royal guardian to the Kingdom of Xanafir, which fell victim to the nothing. As if we're supposed to know what that means. What, what, what does that mean? I don't understand. Could you imagine if Nintendo did this in Smash? Picture this, E3 2018, they just announced Smash Ultimate. Everyone is here, people are going fucking crazy, and to top off the insane amount of excitement going around the gaming community, they announced that they will be adding Bumbly Bleeble to the game. Everyone asks, who the fuck is this? Where are they from? Sakurai grins. You fools, he says. He's from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. He is the protector of the tree lands, and has a heart of gold. Nintendo ends the stream, refuses to elaborate, and leaves. What the fuck? You know, I would maybe understand if Rain Dog was like the mascot of multiverses, maybe. Like the new characters, the protagonists of the game filled with old recognizable characters. Kind of like the reverse of what Street Fighter 3 did. But, like, no. Rain Dog is tucked away into the recesses of the roster, not even showing up in promotional material. Look at this picture, which is the main thing you see when you look the game up. It's the main image for Steam, and probably would be the box art if this game got a physical release. Do you notice something? Our funny dog is nowhere to be seen. There's like 12 characters in this image, and none of them are the sole original character that's included on the roster. It's mind-boggling. They had the balls to put an original character in the roster, but didn't feel like putting him in almost any promotional material that didn't include the entire roster to begin with. Like, what's the problem? If you're gonna have Rain Dog in the game, at least have him front and center. Also, I'd like to point out that he's a non-anthro quadrupedal animal that is in the game, when there's a very obvious character who fits the archetype they could put in, being Scooby fucking Doo. I think what makes the whole situation even funnier is just, like, the way Rain Dog looks. He's, like, a reindeer and a dog, and he has facial hair, almost, and then, like, this, like, fucking Undertale soul heart thing hovering above his head at all times. His animations are also no exception to this. There's this one move he has where he shoots this PK fire-esque projectile, and the way he moves when he does it looks like he's fucking vomiting. His aerial up special has him jump up a little bit before curling into a little ball and rolling around for some reason, which looks hilarious. Apparently your teammate can pick him up and throw him as a projectile, which is somehow even funnier than I initially thought. He has this animation he does where he shakes his ass and sticks his tongue out when he spawns in that just looks fucking goofy. When I first got into the beta, his animation played on the loading screen for like an hour and I got really upset watching Rain Dog twerk in my face. His losing animation might be my favorite animation in any video game I've ever seen, because something about the way his face looks just looks so fucking hilarious to me. Like, why does he look so sad? Why does he look like he aged 20 years? I feel like other people have also caught on to how funny Rain Dog looks. I'm in the server for online multiverses tournaments in New England, and every character has a channel to talk about their competitive usage and stuff. And the Rain Dark channel 
literally just has people posting the rain dog render over and over again another weird rain dog fact i felt like i should mention is that when they announced multiverses they had these neat little graphics to know who's voicing who and they gave rain dog one despite him not talking or even making vocal noises of any sort in the actual game what do they have andrew frankel doing what is he getting paid for? About a year or so back, me and my friends found a tweet that has since been deleted, so I can't supply any images, so you'll just have to take my word for this. It was a simple tweet saying, can we please talk about this show quickly? And attached was this image of the Gravity Falls main cast. People began to reply and Kurt retweet this message, sharing their experiences with the show and what they liked about it. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's that? This random guy that was just inserted to this image. The original poster replied to her own tweet telling everyone she didn't know who that was, but just to ignore it and talk about the show. But there's something about it me and my friends were just so intrigued by. Who is he? Why is he here? Why does he have the same proportions as Dipper and Mabel, despite looking like he's in his late 20s with that full fucking beard? We gave this guy the nickname Jason, and his image was one of the first things that came up if you looked up Gravity Falls for the short time this tweet was up. It was really confusing. About a month or so later, we checked back on the tweet to see that the account was suspended. Not only that, but searching up Gravity Falls no longer yielded the picture no matter how long you scroll or search. We dedicated entire nights just using reverse image search and anything else at our disposal, just trying to find the origin of Jason, the mysterious Gravity Falls character. It's like everyone got mind wiped. It's literally the plot of an SCP article. He became an inside joke within our circle to Photoshop him into various media, but like, that's all he ever was? Who the fuck was Jason? Now you might be wondering why I'm bringing this up in a video that's supposed to be about the fluffy guardian of Xanafir's royal family and the sixth wearer of the gem of power. Well, my dear viewer, Rain Dog is Jason. I mean, not literally, I'm not saying Rain Dog is gonna pop the fursuit head off and reveal this Jesus looking dipper clone. What I'm saying is that Rain Dog's inclusion in the roster feels so inexplicable and out of place, and yet. The game just accepts it, like, oh, obviously, dude, that's Rain Dog, one of the sole survivors of the Great Dimensional Cataclysm. Like, like, no one's gonna question that, just me? Realistically, instead of Jason, I probably could have used a more well-known example of what I mean, like the Graggle slash Gumbly Simpson debacle, or I could have just said, remember that one in Rick and Morty episode? But I wanted to do a more personal example, really. Rain Dog almost feels like a prank, like they're implanting false memories into the minds of the public, saying, oh, you don't remember this classic character? It's so weird. Okay, so, truth be told, I actually have heard theories on why Rain Dog is, like, the way he is. So, if you don't want the magic of this weird deer to be ruined, I suggest clicking off the video now. Keep in mind, this is all speculation based off data mines from the Multiverses code, so this might all be completely wrong. But, apparently, there is a prototype version of Multiverses known as Battlebound, which is still a platform fighter like it is today, except with only original characters, kind of like how Prototype Smash was just a fighting game with no crossovers. There were three OCs in this game, called Ninja, Brute, and Creature. Ninja and Brute were shelved, with Creature becoming the rain dog we know today. Which, honestly, I think the fact that he was originally called Creature just makes him even more funny. The backstory was apparently going to be based around the never-ending story, which, I mean, they already own the rights to, but whatever. Eventually, Player First Game struck a deal with Warner, and they decided to make the game into the Smash Bros-esque crossover platform fighter that it is today. But I feel like all that begs more questions. Why was Rain Dog the only one to survive the jump from original fighter to crossover fighter? I mean, they already canned the ninja and the brute, so why was Rain Dog the hill they wanted to die on? Was he the most marketable, where they're already far enough into Rain Dog's development that canning him would just be a waste of already made assets and resources? I mean, that's the most likely reason, but even then you can't be sure, this is all just speculation. You know, Multiverses is a very incomplete game. At the time of writing the script, they haven't even added Rick and Morty yet, and how the frick can you even call a game complete when Pickle Rick isn't even playable yet? You know, maybe this video won't age well. Like, a year from now, they'll add Ninja and Brute back into the game, along with a subspace emissary-esque story mode that explains what the fuck the Xanafir royal family or the nothing are. Maybe a year from now, Rain Dog is the most well-written character in fiction, and his inclusion in the game makes way more sense than anyone else on the roster. I don't know. But as it stands, the more I think about it, Rain Dog is just one of the most confusing, anomalous, and weirdly hilarious additions to any crossover game I've ever seen.